Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Crowdsource Commander. I am Chris Cornejo. As always, I'm going to be the one building the deck and playing it in a couple of weeks on Commander Kingdom. Uh, yeah, a bit of a different one today. Normally, uh, we're building like two, three color commander decks. I think we built one five once maybe, but anyway. Today is our first mono color deck. We are building Delina, Wild Mage. Which is a little weird to me because you think a mage would be a wizard, but she is in fact an elf shaman. Uh, we had four monocolor options this week to build on our Twitter poll, and y'all chose the red one, so thank you for sticking me with a color. That is notoriously not easy to build a monocolor deck for, uh, <laughs> but we're going to make do the best we can. Uh, Delina is one of the new legends from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, and she has a dice rolling mechanic. Whenever she attacks, you choose a target creature you control, and then roll a d20. If you roll a 1 through 14, I believe, yeah. You create a tapped and attacking token that is a copy of that creature. It's not legendary if the original creature was legendary. And you exile this creature at the end of combat. Yeah, just the end of combat. It's not the end of turn. The end of combat, the creature goes away forever. If you roll a 15 through 20, you create a one of those tokens, so one of those things I just said, and then you roll again. So if you keep rolling 15s through 20s, you can just keep making tokens that are tapped and attacking already. Uh, so there's a couple of ways to go with Delina. We'll get to kind of the way we're going to go. We're going to figure it out as we go. I don't have a super deep plan for this deck, so as we're figuring out what we're going to do, let's talk about the rules and the theme. So the theme for this deck is uh, pretty basically we're going to attack a lot. The plan is uh, just keep attacking. Keep making Delina do her thing. We want to make tokens of creatures. We want them to enter the battlefield. We want them to swing. We want them to leave the battlefield. Yeah, that's it's pretty basic. We aren't going to be super tricky or like prison style red deck. We're going to be a red RDW style deck. First rule, combat is the win con. Uh, what this means is we are not going to be burning people out. We aren't going to do like some huge bonfire of the damned or a comet storm or whatever card you want to do that's just like a big X spell that just goes to people's face. We are not going to kill people that way. Uh, everything that we do to kill somebody must be through combat. That doesn't mean that it has to be combat damage. Yes, extra combat is going to be a thing we're going to do. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, Grey Pelt and Magic Flying Moron. Uh... So, things that trigger off creatures attacking and then do damage, that's fair game. So what is it? Uh, crap, I can't even remember. Cavalcade of Calamity, I think, is one where when creatures with low power attack, it does one damage to a player. Things like that are fine. I'm not counting that as straight up burn. That is still combat that is triggering the damage. So, stuff like that counts, and that is definitely something we're going to do. The next rule. Uh, no swiping swiper. Hello, Mercadian Merchant. How are you? No swiping swiper just means uh, we aren't going to be stealing other people's creatures. So no stuff like zealous conscripts for the most part, unless I'm doing it to my own creatures. No active trees and style effects. I'm going to be honest, the main reason for this is because this is going to be a webcam commander game. And uh, I don't want to have to make a ton of infinite tokens just because I'm a really bad artist and trying to do that really fast stresses me out. Uh, also, I like... If we're going to lean into being a mono red deck, I want mono red to win, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to steal somebody's really good multicolor creature or, some, or another color creature to help us get over the hump. I want us to win. I don't want things other people play to win with this deck. Now, normally... <laughs> well, Carter Doom Scourge is black red. That's fine. That, that's not Delina. That's not what we're doing here. Uh, the last rule. Normally, the last rule is going to be our money limit. Uh, we're mono red, but there's there's no limit. We're gonna use whatever we can. Uh, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to put like we can only spend a hundred dollars. Red being a mono deck at all already makes things trickier. Being a mono red deck usually puts one a bit of a target on you, and you aren't the most well set up color wise. It's getting a little better, especially with all the like cast things from exile effects that red's been getting recently. I think mono white's kind of become the de facto worst mono color, maybe? It's a matter of opinion. Who knows? But anyway, uh, those are our rules. That's what we're building off of. Let's get started with the lands. So, 
Our deck to start is pretty boring. Uh, I have nothing special for this deck. All I did was slot in the 38 lands that I usually like to have commander decks start with. We might go up from that number, we might go down from that number, just depending on how the deck goes. Obviously, they aren't all going to end up being basic mountains, but that's just what I slotted in to start. So, we will start, as always, at EDA Trek. Den of the Bugbear <laughs> seems like a fun land for attacking. Oh, there's going to be man lands in here, for sure, or creature lands. Yes, those are, those are definitely going to be in there. Uh, we're going to start at EDA Trek. I know not everybody is a fan of EDA Trek. Uh, EDA Trek is perfectly fine. Card Kingdom is affiliated with them, but aside from that, EDA Trek can be used essentially in one of three ways. They can be used, I don't want to have to think about this deck, what should I throw in there? Excellent. They can be used, uh, I'm having trouble filling in the last few slots, what is the last few things I should throw in there? Oh, these are cards I didn't think of. Great. It can be used as, I don't want to build what everybody else is building. Let's look at what everybody else is building so I know what to avoid. We do a little bit of all of that here, so EDA Trek is a good place to start. Uh, I like to start with building out my mana base, figuring out what I want to throw in there. We have a perfectly workable mana base <laughs> with mountains. The, the joy of a mono red deck is your mana base is not going to be that tricky. So let's figure out what we want to do. So. As we can see, we start out with all of the fetch lands and stuff like Myriad Landscape. Uh, I don't know how I feel about fetches in a mono red deck. Like, I get the point is just to thin out your deck and maybe fill up your graveyard if you just need cards in your graveyard. I don't really see a ton of point. Like, I want to use those slots that would just go to deck thinning to just throw in more fancy stuff, and I know that's not exactly how it works, it is still a land slot. I... Yeah, I suppose, like, if we have things that are putting things on top of our deck, or say we play a Sensei's Divining Top style effect, then having some fetches in there is really good. Cards like Myriad Landscape aren't exactly ramp, just the way, like, the tempo and the way they work, because it does enter tapped, you have to spend mana to make it happen. It's not the worst thing, though. Yeah. Do we bother with Myriad Landscape? Or any of the fetches? I don't know for now. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Cavern of Souls I could see being a thing, but I also don't really know about that. Uh, Delina also is a really new commander, and also I'm not sure how popular. Let's let's take a look really quick. How popular is Delina? How many decks have people made an EDH rec for her? Nice, 69 decks, rate 862. So Delina is not that popular of a commander. Uh, we'll get to Ancient too. For some reason, a lot of those are in utility lands. I get the feeling we're going to have a lot more to say when we get to utility lands. This is all just fetches. Cavern Command Tower is here. I have no idea why Command Tower is here. You're a mono red deck, you don't need to play Command Tower. <laughs> uh, never play Command Tower in a mono deck. All it does is it opens itself up to getting wastelanded and other things. Like, I know there is an argument for playing sources that can somehow make other colors of mana in case you are being able to cast other people's spells. Command Tower doesn't do that. We're a mono red deck, so all it can do is tap for red. Don't play Command Tower in a mono deck. So, uh, Gemstone Caverns I've talked about in some of these other ones. I'm not the biggest fan of Gemstone Caverns. If we're playing a different sort of constructed, uh, good point, Graypelt. Like, yes, unique land names can be a thing. Command Tower does serve a purpose there. Uh, but... I don't know how much Mono Red really cares about that sort of thing. You could play Mono Red Field of the Dead, but that just seems like you're going hard mode for no reason. Uh, back to Gemstone Caverns real quick. I'm not the biggest fan of Gemstone Caverns. It just... Like... There's, there's no point. Again, it either taps for colorless or it taps for red. This... Uh, it could tap for any color if we steal stuff. We aren't really stealing stuff, so I don't really care. So for now, none of these are going to go in the deck. The only, like, I could see some of the fetches maybe making it if we have a bunch of, let's look at the top card and figure out if we want it. 
But for now, we're going to go to Utility Lands and figure out what we want. Cavern, maybe. Uh, so far, when I've been playing these games, there's not been a ton of counter magic. Like, that could always change. I don't know what the people are going to be playing. I don't know their commanders yet or anything. But uh, Cavern is the one card I could think. And I suppose if we are playing Shamans, I guess. Because I don't think Elf would do a lot for us in Mono Red. Maybe Shamans could. If we end up with a ton of one creature type, I might throw in Cavern, but for now I'm not going to bother. So, we get to Utility Lanes. Uh, Rogue's Passage and Access Tunnel, which are basically the same sort of card, I am absolutely throwing in here. Uh, we want Delina to be attacking a lot. That does mean, however, that Delina is going to be open to getting blocked a lot. We're going to try to mitigate that as much as we can, several different ways, but uh, being, making her unblockable seems like a very good start. Um, Castle and Breath seems absolutely fine. I am always a fan of Command Beacon. Uh, yeah, Command Beacon, great. Especially if your commander might die a lot. Ours is a commander that can come out relatively fast and is likely going to die at least a few times just because one, she has a decently powerful ability that could that gets scarier depending on the rest of the board and two is just attacking a lot so it could get blocked if i don't have something else to go with it so yeah i'm fine with that uh war room there are better versions of this sort of thing like we'd have to pay three pay one life to draw a card that's not the worst but there are cards that do something like that better in my opinion i will be shocked if one of those doesn't end up on this list somewhere uh ancient tomb I am fine with Ancient Tomb being in this deck. Let's do it. Den of the Bugbear. Absolutely. It is a good land for our purposes. Nykthos. We could do Nykthos. Do we want Nykthos? I like Nykthos. I guess that's if we're going Big Red. Nykthos is a maybe. I'm throwing it in for now, but I'm not sure it's going to make the final cut. Uh, Valakut. So, Valakut... Valakut, Valakut, I say, I say it both ways, I go back and forth, I don't know. Uh, Valakut is fine. Uh, like I said before, I don't want to win through burn. I'm fine having a little bit of burn in the deck, especially to clear out creatures. Uh, a target creature or player, does, is the oracle on that changed so that it is uh, fully any target or does it have to be creature or player basically can it hit a planeswalker let's find out i don't know how much that's actually going to affect whether or not i throw it in but it's a good question to know to any target okay maybe valid could again i'm throwing that in but that's a maybe i also don't even know how many mountains we end up playing as opposed to how many utility lanes i'm sure we're gonna have plenty but we'll find out. Forgotten Cave, absolutely. I'm always a fan of the Cycling Lands. I talk about it every time. I'm not going to bother here. Uh, Urza's Saga, sure. I like, like, yeah, making artifacts, searching out our Soul Ring or whatever else we have in a low mana cost, low mana slot for artifacts, I am perfectly fine with. Uh, Hall of the Bandit Lord, no. Uh, I have seen people try to play Hall of the Bandit Lord and make it work. It's usually awful unless your deck is super attuned to needing the creature to be hasty no don't do it it's fine it has a spot this i don't think is quite the deck for it and yeah I'm, i've never been a huge fan of hall of the bandit lord uh treasure vault could be fine again we aren't going like big huge mana stuff like as far as like we aren't doing big x spells we might be doing a ton of mana stuff but who knows for now, I'm leaving it out, just because if we need it, we'll throw it in, but I don't know that we will. Uh, same for Inventor's Fair. If we end up have being pretty artifact-heavy, I will do Inventor's Fair, but until then, not on. Uh, Hand Weir, I am fine with. Yeah, see, Hand Weir to me is a better version of something like Hall of the Bandit Lord. Like... Technically, you are adding... Hall of the Bandit Lord is less mana intensive. 
because you are adding that mana to cast the creature, which then enters with haste. Hand where battlements is an additional two mana, essentially, itself and a mountain to give creatures haste. But it has additional upside, and it doesn't enter the battlefield tapped, which is kind of a big deal, so I'm fine with that. Uh, which does mean we are going to play Hanwer Garrison, just because. Uh, Maze of Ith. So, Maze of Ith. Well, I'll, I'm kind of skipping around, but we'll go through all these, don't worry. Uh, Maze of Ith I definitely want. Maze of Ith is another way of protecting Delina. Uh, Maze of Ith lets us attack with Delina, and then before blocks, or even after blocks, doesn't really matter, we Maze of Ith our own Delina, which removes her from combat, untaps her. Does it untap her? I think so. Yeah, untap target attack from creature. It's the other one that doesn't untap. Anyway, but yeah, untaps Delina. Uh, yeah, it it does what we want it to do. It protects our commander. Uh, sandstone needle. Don't think I care. It comes into play tapped. It technically is a bit of acceleration, but it also goes away real fast. I don't think we are that aggro of a red deck that we need, like, just those two quick shots. Uh, Spine Rock Knoll? I don't know. I'm always very iffy on the hideaway lands. They, they, you are not able to rely on them, especially ones like Spine Rock Knoll, as much as you wish you could. Like, the blue one, whose name I forget right now, is much easier to control when that's going to happen because you can, like, mill yourself to make that happen. It's fine, Rock Mole, for the moment, I'm going to leave out. Dwarven Ruins is a worse version of something to me. It's not worse. But it falls into the same camp as Sandstone Needle. Like, coming into play tap is a big cost. And I would rather have the land stick around than just get the one shot of acceleration. Uh, what do we got? High Market. I don't mind High Market. I wonder if there's just a better thing we can do. Yeah. Like, I, I like the idea of having a land that sacks stuff. Because we're going to be exiling those tokens at the end of combat anyway, so with like that trigger on the stack at the end of combat, we can sacrifice those tokens for an effect. Uh, unless we can come up with a different thing, though, I'm fine with High Market being in that slot. Cathedral of War? So Cathedral of War is fine if Delina is the only thing we want to be attacking with, because the way that works, even though more things will end up attacking, Delina attacks... Both triggers go on the stack. Cathedral of War would trigger, and then Delina's, Delina would also trigger. And even though those other creatures enter the battlefield tapped and attacking, uh, uh, Delina did attack alone according to the rules of the game, so Cathedral of War would still go off. But I don't know that I always want Delina to just be attacking alone. I, I'm planning on going with a bit more of a swarm strategy. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, terrain generator is fine. If we end up with a bunch of ways to put land cards in our hand, I'm more for it, but I don't think I really care otherwise. Reliquary Tower I'll throw in just because it's low cost for a decent effect. We might play a bunch of ways to get cards into our, to draw cards, get cards back from our graveyard, so I'm fine with that. Uh, Bonder's Enclave is a decent draw a card ability. Uh, it's, so what was the other one we were looking at? The, uh, War Room. It's three mana and pay essentially one life, where this is just pay three mana, draw a card, if we control a creature with power four or greater. We are probably going to at some point, so I'm fine with that being a card draw thing. Uh, Ghost Quarter I always like having one of. Or, like, one or two effects that can blow up lands, just because uh, occasionally lands are a problem. I don't like focusing on that, especially if I'm playing for somewhat more funsies, which Commander Kingdom is supposed to be. Uh, we want to build powerful decks, but fun decks. We don't want to build powerful super stacks decks, because that just uh, makes not for a fun viewing experience, so we aren't going to do it. 
But having one or two outlets to blow up lands is always a good idea, just because lands are a problem. Sometimes. Uh, Dwarven Mine, it gives us a blocker. It's fine. It's not exciting, but I'm fine throwing it in there. Just gives us a 1-1 one, one red dwarf creature token. Uh, Buried Ruin is situational. It might come out. It's good enough that I'm going to put it in there. Uh, there are a couple of other lands I am going to throw in. But for now, that is a decent start. I'm going to copy what I got here. And I am going to add it into my deck, which is going to take me one second to do. And I will point out the other card that I add in in one second. Add that and save that. We, oh wait, let's uh, let's get rid of some of these lands. I added a total of 19 lands, so we take out 19 mountains, which would look like that. I'm going to switch back over to my list and visual view, and we're going to refresh these. You can see what the deck looks like after some amount of land shenanigans. Uh, there's that. I need to update the list, which is there. Sweet. All right. So, we have the lands down. Uh, the one land I added in, see if I can find it in here, was Arch of Orozca. Uh Arch of Orozca, let's find it in our actual list. There we go. So, Ascend, uh, tap to add one mana of colorless mana to our mana pool, and five mana draw a card, activate this only if you have the City's Blessing. Uh, I just like having a couple of different land outlets to draw a card. So we have Bonder's Enclave and we have Arch of Arazka. They both have different conditions. Arch of is a little more expensive to do, but is easier to hit. Keeping a four mana, four power creature on board isn't necessarily the trickiest thing, but there's going to be board wipes. People are going to want to kill our creatures because hopefully we're playing decent creatures. So this one is less dependent on us having a board state. So I like it as an outlet for this sort of thing. Uh, any other lands y'all think I should be throwing in in a mono red deck, let me know. But for now, we move on to the next bit, which is Rampin' Rocks. So we'll start with Utility Artifacts, figure out what we're doing. Let me clear out my clipboard, because I always forget to do that, and then I add in way too many things. Uh, Soul Ring. Absolutely. Arcane Signet. No. I mean, maybe there's other cards we can throw in here. Like, is Arcane Signet worth it in a monocolored deck? I am a fan of it in any two or more color deck, pretty obviously. It's just one of the best fixing things ever. Is it good on its own in a monocolored deck? Are there better things we can be doing? I think so. We'll find out if I'm right or not. Uh, Cursed Mirror is fun. Yeah, I like Cursed Mirror because it is either just ramp, we just add a red, it's three mana, which isn't the best, or it becomes a copy of any creature on the battlefield until the end of turn, except it has haste. So it's three mana for a short a duration clone that then becomes a rock that seems fine uh, fire diamond enters the battlefield tapped it is good but I think we can find better things so for the moment not odd uh, fell stone nah again we aren't planning on stealing people or like especially casting other people's spells so we don't need the off-color fixing uh, everflowing chalice I'm down for mana crypt so here's the deal. We do not have a monetary uh, limit, which is all great and well and good. I personally have a bit of a money limit on what I am willing to spend on these cards in this deck. I do not own a mana crypt myself. Uh, I don't know that I want to. It's fun and funny. It adds the dice rolling stuff. 
Ruby Medallion is much better than Fire Diamond. I was planning on throwing Ruby Medallion in there, so we'll get to that. Uh, Mana Crypt for now I'm going to skip, because while we do not have a money limit, I have a personal money limit. A lot of the cards I'm planning on throwing into this deck I happen to own. I used to be a Legacy player, and I've been playing Magic for a decently long time, so I have a bit of a collection. I am trying not to spend too much of my money on this if I can help it. Card Kingdom will help me with some things, but a Mana Crypt is kind of a lot. Uh, so for now, I'm going to skip it. If I really need the ramp, I'll do it, but... St like, if you start throwing in too many too good ramp spells, like, it, imagine a turn one Mana Crypt Soul Ring, you are automatically the target at the table. Sometimes toning it down a little can be okay. Uh, Heraldic Banner, I like. It's just buff the power of everything we do. That does make automatically, if we have Heraldic Banner and cast Delina and we have a Bonders Enclave out, uh, Delina is enough to trigger the Bonders Enclave, so. I like it. Uh, Liquid Metal Torque is fine. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate the offer, uh, Irish MTL, but uh, I do also get an employee discount at Card Kingdom, which generally makes me trading or buying from other people a little iffy. Liquid Metal Torque Torque, not toke, it's not a chef's hat. Uh, if we have a reason to turn non-lane permanence into artifacts, I'm fine with it, but I'm not going to throw it in by itself. No money limit as far as whatever we end up with is fine. I personally have a money limit. Uh, Chrome Mox, eh, it's fine. I, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Like, Chrome Mox to me is... I think this discussion was had on Twitter a while ago, not by me, but like I'm pretty sure Shivam brought it up. Some somebody I know there is like a few cards that define the divide between like CDH and EDH. To me, when you're throwing in cards like Chrome Mox, uh, you're starting to point more towards I am trying to be a CDH deck. I don't really know why I get that impression. It's just. If you, if you are in that much need of that explosive acceleration, you're kind of signaling something. It's weird, I know, but yeah. That, that, is, that is how I feel about that. Mox Opal will go in the deck if we uh, end up being artifact heavy enough, but until we know that we're going to do that, I don't think so. Uh, Mana Vault, we could throw in. I'm much more willing to throw in a Mana Vault than a Mana Crypt. Uh, do, it, it should also be noted that uh, three damage a turn isn't nothing. I have seen multiple people die to man, their own Mana Crypts, both watching like Canlander and Vintage players and in Commander. Commander is always the funniest to watch people die to their own Mana Crypt. Uh, Jeweled Lotus, nah, like, we, we, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna be that guy. Uh, Mana Vault, maybe? Let's add three and we have to pay four to do it. Is that worth it that often? Like, I don't know about, I don't know how you think about Mana Vault, but Mana Vault, I kind of think of as, especially early game, you are getting that extra three mana maybe once every four or five turns, just because hopefully you are doing other things with your mana than just untapping mana vault on your other turns. So it's good for big explosive starts and, like, big jumps occasionally, but it's not super reliable. Reliable. Yeah, like, ma mana vault isn't so expensive that I'm not willing to spend the money on it. I'm just I am unsure of its viability in this deck, or like the effect relative to what I want it to do. Uh, stuff like Commander Sphere, I'm kind of okay with. Ebony Fly isn't better, it isn't bad. Ebony Fly is actually a mana rock that can help Delina get through. Yeah, Mana Crypt's way more expensive. So Ebony Fly, I like. 
It's just a nice little two mana rock. Two mana is very good. I do like the two mana bit of things. That can help Delina uh, be a little evasive, so I'm good with that. Commander Spear can sack tap to draw a card, which is nice. Uh, save because they were playing against Punishing Fire's deck in their Grove of Burnt Willows. That's fantastic. Oh, that's good. Oh, is that uh, the Chase Chase Hansen's uh, Strifle Pile deck that was doing the Punishing Fire thing? Uh, I have seen a lot of Punishing Fire decks over the years, various configurations, and half of them seem very good and do exactly what you want them to do, and half of them just seem like they are very good at making the game last an extra 17 turns. <laughs> Uh, Hedron Archive, I like for some reason more than Commander Sphere. Uh, it's slower, obviously it comes out on turn four. You do add two colorless mana as opposed to one red mana. I like the ability to sacrifice it to draw two cards instead of that. Like, it does cost mana. But I, uh, maybe. I'll throw it in for now. I don't know how much ramp or, like, rocks we really need or want. Uh, thought Vessel is fantastic. You should, If you don't have a Thought Vessel, buy a Thought Vessel for Commander, if you play Commander. It, it's very good. It is an extra Reliquary Tower effect, which is never bad. It's two mana ramp. It's just, it's a good card. Get Thought Vessels. Horn Power Stone, Guardian Idol. Uh, Guardian Idol, I don't really care about that much. Like, it's a good two mana rock, except that it enters tapped. Same thing with Horn Power Stone. It's a good rock, except it enters tapped. The good old Dynamo. I could play Thran Dynamo. Yeah, you know what? I'm playing Thran Dynamo. Eat it. I don't know. Uh, mm. I am definitely willing to throw it in. I just want to see what the price... I, I am amazed I didn't see this on the EDH deck page, but let's really quick check in and see what a Rumi Medallion looks like. That's not that bad of a price. I am definitely willing to do that. So we are also going to throw in one ruby medallion. So that's eight pieces of rock slash ramp. We might have more ramp in some spells we end up casting. I might throw Bergy into the deck, for example. Uh, but for now, that's, that's decent. So let's add those in. I'll get everything updated in a moment. Save that. Let's switch to that visual view, the list, the cards, and let's refresh some pages. Sorry about these little weights. The way I have this set up is a little clunky because I just have like four different web pages open all the time, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it works. It is the best way I can think of to do this that actually shows all the information I want it to show. Uh, I do like the name for this deck also that I came up with, How to Make Friends, hopefully our social media manager. There's no Krarks from their die rolls, huh? Is that new card for each AFR class? Yeah, we're about to get to uh, that. Don't worry, Barbarian class is definitely going into the deck. Uh, is Gamble on the table? It's not not on the table. I'd be willing to throw Gamble in there, I just don't know what we would be gambling for. Irish MTL, uh, is there no Crocs, th is there another one? Yeah, I think that is it, for die rolls. I believe so. I mean, fortunately we do get to use it, it is mono red. Uh, but that's where we are. So just with our rocks, our ramp, Oh, did I? I didn't actually even throw a ruby medallion into this yet. Let's add that. Ruby medallion. Add card. Save. Let's refresh these again. That's where we are. Cool. All right. 
uh, I don't want you to join the Clean Plate Club. I mean, feel free to join the Clean Plate Club. Clay- Clean Plate Club if you really want, but I'm not having that ad right now. There we go. So there is our list. Yeah, I'm fine with throwing gambling in as kind of a sub-theme for this, so stuff like gamble's fine. I don't know if I'm going to go as far as, like, Burning Inquiry, but we'll find out. I should probably eventually pull the trigger and buy a dock side. This might be the deck I finally do it. Who knows? I've been avoiding it just because it is expensive, but we're mono red. If I'm ever gonna do it, when if not now? So, maybe. Speaking of, this is where we're at. Uh, what is that? What does that even say? We're at how many cards? <laughs> Didn't even look. 48 cards total, so that's pretty good as far as like that takes care of our mana a bunch of utility stuff with the lands we have room for plenty more utility stuff in the lands if people think of other stuff to throw in i'm fine getting weird with this as far as the lands go uh there have to be more red man lands i can throw in right wait for the secret layer next week yeah but i need i need the cards by in two weeks uh yeah like, I need to play with these cards. Alright, so our next place we go after we figured out our ramp and rocks is draw and removal, but at this point, I'm kind of fine. Just let, Let's just figure out what we're throwing into the deck. So we're going to start from the top down. We can kind of focus on ramp and removal, but I'm just kind of going to go... We're, we're into the theme. So ramp, removal, theme. Don't bother because the man lands don't come in as creatures and the lands are just tapped in exile. Yeah, no, I'm not saying I want the man lands to be copied by Delina, but man lands are good to have occasionally. We have the Den of the Bugbear, which is great. But uh, any other lands we can think of that we want in the deck, yell at me. That doesn't have to just be man lands. So, uh, let's clear our clipboard. This, by the way, is a fantastic thing in EDA Trek that I love. The clipboard is so useful. Uh, I'm sure other sites have something like it too, but it's just very nice for when you're building a deck and getting ideas. Uh, Barbarian Class is that card we were just talking about. If you would roll one or more dice, instead roll that many dice, uh, plus one, and ignore the lowest roll. If you play D&D, this gives you advantage. Uh, whenever Next level, whenever you roll one or more dice, target creature you control gets plus two plus zero and gains menace until end of turn, so that helps Delina also not be blocked in a bit of ways, and just other big creatures that we want. Uh, and uh, the third level is fan- a fervor. Creatures you control have haste. It's not even fervor, it's just one-sided creatures you control have haste. It's anger in your graveyard. So it's great. We want Barbarian class. It does... Literally everything that we want. Harmonic Prodigy uh, is not bad by itself. It's two mana, one three with prowess, which is it gives a. However, if an ability of a shaman or another wizard you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. So Delina rolls two dice, copies either the same creature twice or two different creatures. Uh, yeah, but that's not exactly so. Dmat Gamer, yes. Uh, Harmonic Prodigy doubles dice rolls. I think there's more than one way to double dice rolls or double things like that. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, as far as the Crux Thumb effect where you get to like roll two dice, take the higher one, I'm pretty sure it's just Barbarian class. Uh, what else do we got? Plundering Barbarian, destroy target artifact, or create a treasure token when it enters. That's fine. I mean, I'm not going to say no. I want ways to destroy other people's artifacts, so probably sure, but it's it's unexciting. It might end up getting cut. Uh, Obsidian Charma. This spell costs one less to cast for each land your opponent's control that could produce colorless. Two harmonics is very nice, uh, especially when we're getting into second and third combat steps, which we'll get to. It could be a thing. Uh, when Obsidian Charma enters the battlefield, destroy target non base land and opponent controls. So here's the deal. Do we want to become the target even harder than we're already going to be? We are essentially a mono-red semi-aggro deck. I mean, we're, we're going to be fairly aggro. We're going to be attacking a lot once Delina comes out. We just aren't like a hyper-aggro deck that's trying to like throw down a bunch of one and two drops and kill people real fast with a bunch of different effects. 
Obsidian Charma, once you start playing land destruction, especially repeatable land destruction, which Obsidian Charma plus Delina essentially is, people do not like you and will try to kill me very fast. Uh, we might get there. Well, I, we try to avoid infinite, actual infinite combos for uh, Webcam Commander just because... I mean, it's fine. You need ways to win the game, but... Like, especially if it is a pretty fast combo, no. Like, since Port Razor does need to deal combat damage, that's more of an option for us, but we'll see. Uh, Obsidian Charm off for the moment, I think I'm going to skip. Well, I mean, Delina plus Avalanche Rider is essentially the same as Delina plus Obsidian Charm off. Obs Avalanche Rider can kill just any land, though, right? It's Stone Rain, so it's not non basic. I mean, if, I, if I'm going to go that way, I would throw in Obsidian Charma, which I still might, and I'm tempted to, just because 2 mana for Flying 4-4 four, four by itself is really good. So yeah, we'll, we'll throw it in there. Like, it, there, there, there's enough people, it's a four player game. So the odds of me being able to cast Obsidian Charma for any discount are approaching like what 80 percent more than that especially by turn two three or four well we drew tables hate for mazes and we might try hate for any random thing we do mazes end i kind of get the hate for it especially because i was in a position when i played it where i could start ramping out uh gates pretty fast uh and that is an actual in the game like obsidian charma is more just annoying mm -hmm. fury do we want fury when Fury enters the battlefield, it deals 4 damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers. Uh, it's real funny with the Lena. It helps us clear the board a bit. It doesn't hit players, which I like, because that means it doesn't violate the rule of combat is the win con. Like, we aren't trying to burn people out. Just through, like, burn spells. Uh, sure... You seem fine. Do, 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 do. Dire Fleet, Daredevil. Enters the battlefield. You may cast it this turn. You may spend mana so or man of any type to cast that spell. If it we put into graveyard exile instead. I mean that's fine, but like it just it just seems more that that doesn't really fit into our theme at all. Like, yeah, I guess if you're copying it, you just get to keep copying other people's spells, which isn't the worst. What do we think of Dire Fleet Daredevil? I'm leaning towards it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's very dependent, isn't it? Like, they have to have cast spells that we want to cast right then. Which doesn't seem fantastic. Uh, Port Razor. Oh, I see. So Port Razor does go infinite with Delina specifically because the copies can keep attacking new players. Terror of the Peaks with Delina's gas. I mean, a lot of cards that trigger with attacks and other things is gas. Do we want the infinite combo? Maybe. I'll throw it in for now, but I, I, like, I'm going to be honest. This falls in the same level of we're going to cut first as something like that Barbarian ab above. Like, it's super good. It, it works with this deck very well. I am not looking to infinite people out. <laughs> uh, Jumi, I'm right there with you. Like, I can step back and be objective about why I got knocked out for that five color mana base, but they are all cowards and I am going to hold it against them forever. Only slightly joking. <laughs> I mean, the Maze's End plus the World Tree I can see being very scary. <laughs> I'll, I'll just admit that right off the board, right off the bat. Anywho. Uh, Jessica's Will is good. I mean, it's just... 
Jessica's Will is one of those cards that probably ends up getting thrown in, but it's going to get thrown in near the end. Just because it's not really thematic, it's just basic good. Like, last week, last month when I was playing Prosper, Jessica's Will was auto-include because it's, you exile the cards. Which Prosper likes casting cards from exile. Delina doesn't care. Like, this is just a good card in a Delina deck, it's not thematic, so not going to throw it in as a matter of course. Uh, Fnatic Mogus, uh, unfortunately, is violating our rule one, where combat is the win. So, nah. Uh, Mind Claw Shaman kind of falls into, uh, it's a more expensive version of the Dire Fleet Daredevil. I'm fine not doing it. Uh, no Swiping Swiper. Uh, Goblin Chain Whirler is... Meh. Like, it's fine. It clears out other... It clears out opposing token makers. But... Eh. It's just kind of meh. Otherwise, like, a 3-3 first strike isn't awful in Commander. Knocking down Planeswalkers, knocking down token creatures isn't bad. Of course, the tokens do have to be one ones. It's, yeah, not yeah. You know what? You know what I'm saying. You're a maybe, but I'm not throwing you on the list yet. With enough copies, it can be a one-sided board wipe. That's true. We are copying things. So, on the turn that it attacks, like it comes in, we can give it haste, then attacks, makes a copy. We have things we can make like two or three copies with some other stuff. You do have to be lucky. Yeah, Magical Christmas Land, I can see Chain Whirler being absolutely fantastic. It's a double trigger? The, what, the dude up top? The, uh, Prodigy? Prodigy isn't a double trigger. I mean, it's double trigger just because we're making two copies. It's not, uh, I see, that's what you're saying. Okay, yes. Uh, it doesn't double trigger Chain Whirl, it double triggers Delina, so we get the two Chain Whirlers. Got it. <laughs> that... Yeah, a lot of things have to go right to make that. Like I said, it's definitely on the maybe pile. It's high on the maybe pile, but I'm not sure I'm throwing it in yet. Uh, Terror of the Peaks is... Deals damage equal to that creature's power to any targets. Terror of the Peaks is fantastic. It kind of... Any target means I don't have to target players, so it's kind of riding the line on does it... Uh, go against our rule one or not. Uh, it's close. I do like the fact that it has the ward, essentially. Spells your opponent's cast the target air of the peaks cost additional three life to cast. Uh, sure. Sure. For now, sure. It, that that second ability, or third ability, I guess, because flying is pretty close to violating rule one, but we'll stick with it for now. Uh, Wheel of Misfortune. I remember this card being fun, but I don't remember exactly what it does. Each player secretly chooses number zero or greater, then all players reveal those numbers simultaneously to determine the highest and lowest. Wheel of Misfortune deals equal to the highest number to each player who chose that number. Each player who didn't choose the lowest number discards their hands and draws seven cards. Uh, Wheel of Misfortune? Or are you saying Terror of the Peaks from Generic Good Just Wow? Wheel of Misfortune seems fun and funny, but... I don't... How does it really fit into Lena? I don't, yeah, I don't think Wheel of Misfortune is there. Irish MTL, I'm with you on Terror of the Peaks going into the deck, because it's just good. Uh, Ragavan's, again, like, Ragavan is just generic good. I can see why it's good into Lena, but I don't really care. I also don't want to be stealing other people's spells if I can help it for that uh, second rule, no swiping swiper. Red Dragon surely violates rule one. Uh, Mirage Mirror, I think we did. Oh no. Mirage Mirror. 
Did I have Mirage Mirror? I had the Cursed Mirror come in. That's right. Yeah, we don't have any real payoffs on wheels yet. We aren't playing any of the stuff that would do that, so don't care. Uh, Hoarding Ogre is just more die rolling, which isn't bad, but is meh. Don't really care about that. Swarming Goblins seems much funnier, just because you are making a ton of tokens over time. Uh, Earth Cult Elemental. <laughs> oh boy. Earth Cult Elemental will get me some hate. Uh, but I'm fine with getting some amount of hate. You're funny. <laughs> You're also big enough that you are much more threatening if I copy you with Delina attacking. Uh, Tybalt's Trickery is... I like having uh, off-color counterspells in decks when I can just because people don't play around them. So, seems funny. And also, there's the whole let's see what happens element to it. Yeah, this definitely isn't going to be uh, me, like, trying to counter my own thing, I think. All right, top cards, where are we at? Oh, Mindstone. How come I didn't think of Mindstone before? Mindstone's great. I have a bunch of ramp already, so I'm not sure. Uh, Greaves, I like. I might throw it in there. There's different equipment that I'm probably going to end up using. I don't know about instead, but at least additionally. Solemn's good. We like ramp. And we like card draw. Uh, Chaos Warp. I like just for problem enchantments. We kind of have to. I'd get rid of Dynamo to be honest. Yeah, I should get rid of Dynamo from Mind Zone, shouldn't I? Fine. We'll make that change in a second. Remind me when I'm actually uh, getting to adding these cards to things to take out Thran Dynamo. I will do so. I miss Thran Dynamo being more of a thing in Commander. Uh, combustible Gear Hulk, you're a what? Target opponent may have you draw three cards. If you don't, you mill three, then it deals damage to that player equal to total mana value of those cards. That's starting to get into Rule 1 territory. For the moment, no, I, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Uh, hey, it's Dockside. Yeah, we'll do Dockside. Fine. 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 Blasphemous Act. We are going to be essentially a creature-based deck, but having some sort of board wipe feels like a good idea. For now, yes. We'll see. Uh, Perforos God of the Forge would absolutely be something we want in this deck, except that it is one of the biggest offenders of rule number one that we can possibly do. Uh, is Dockside stealing stuff? Oh, no swiping? Uh, no active treason style effects. We are playing our own creatures, we aren't stealing other people's. So yeah, we've got the Dockside. Impact Tremors does violate Rule 1, would also be pretty good. Thrill Possibility, I'm going to throw in some effects like this, I'm just not sure what yet, and we'll see what room we have left. But yeah, Red Card Draw is the thing, we're going to have enough mountains in the deck we can pitch one or two. Uh, Siege Gang Commander seems real funny. Threaten effects are very good with this deck, uh, but... I, I want I want to win. I don't want cards other people's play to let me win, if that makes sense. Uh, creatures. Hey, creatures. Hey, Inferno Titan. You're real good with Delina. Let's do that. Uh, Kiki Jiki. As long as we aren't infiniting with it, I am in theory fine with Kiki Jiki. Do... Yeah, sure. Uh, Imperial Recruiter is a maybe. Like, Imperial Recruiter is fine. I am not the hugest fan of a ton of tutors. And I would rather do things like Gamble in this deck. Torbrand, after making like five copies of him. Uh, seems good. 
Uh, combat Celebrant. We do like additional combat steps. Uh, Wily Goblin's just the treasure one. Don't really care. Morag. Uh, if it's your main phase, there's an additional phase. At the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. Yeah, we like, we like combating. We are all about the combat. Uh, whenever Var Child Betrayer of Keldor deals combat damage to a player, that player creates uh, survivors. Survivors your opponent's control can't block and they can't attack you or a player you control, and then when it leaves the battlefield, gain control of all survivors. So if I control them, they absolutely can block. And if I'm creating tokens of Var Child. So. Varchild seems great, except that it's non-evasive 3-3. So making sure that the copies of Varchild get through to make those survivors is not a guarantee at all. It seems good and fun, and sure, for now, just because I do plan on getting a few ways, like we have the Rogue's Passage and things like that to let it get through. Uh, duplicant is good. Uh, maybe? Yeah, I mean, we, I should just do duplicant, right? Just because? We, we like exiling things? Yeah, sure. Uh, Chancellor of the Forge, if it's in our opening hand, we make 1-1 one, one Red Goblin, with haste. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put X-1-1 one, one Red Goblin creature tokens on with haste onto the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures I control. So it's a one-shot Cranko, essentially. But for all creatures, not just for goblins. Uh, you're not, like, I can definitely see that chaining with Delina. It is seven mana. Maybe on that one. Torbran, I'm much more. Yes, let's 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 go for it. Uh, anger. Yeah, we like we like ways of giving all our creatures haste. Uh, Felden, I'm meh on like yes, more more copying creatures that have died, but. Eh. Uh, Ogre Battle Driver isn't bad. Uh, Sundial of the Infinite is a card I plan on throwing in. That's kind of like one of the last steps here. It's just uh, ending the turn after combat damage with the exile triggers on the stack. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, Goto is great, but I'm not going to do that right now. I don't know how much uh, equipment I plan on running. Uh, Ogre Battle Driver gives things haste. Uh, creatures don't necessarily need haste for Delina to do the thing. The creatures don't have to be attacking for Delina to make a copy. They just have to exist on the battlefield. So, giving all my creatures haste is nice, and like giving new creatures that enter haste is nice. It's not absolutely necessary. Uh, what do we got? Uh, Emrakul's Hatcher... Okay, that, that's just in here to make the spawns, which is fine, but who cares? Hellkite Tyrant is obviously good, but not the win con I want. Meteor Golem absolutely goes in. Uh, real funny, real good. Uh, violates rule number one, so no on the Brazen Dwarf. Uh, Chaos Chandler is pretty good, but... Very mana intensive. Not sure on that one right now. Wildfire Devils enters the battlefield at the beginning of your upkeep. Choose player at random. That player exiles an instant or sorcery card from their graveyard. Copy that card. Uh, yeah, that's that's a little too. Like if we aren't taking Dire Fleet Daredevil and the other one, we aren't taking Wildfire Devils. Rapacious Dragon is just, let's make treasures, which is fine, but boring. Spawn of Thraxis enters the battlefield. It deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains I control. Uh, it's fine, but violating rule number one if we use it for anything other than the creature bit. 
Beetle back, Chief enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. I can see why that's in there. Fiendish duo. What's Fiendish duo? Okay. Card. Fiendish duo. Uh, first strike, source deal damage to opponent, deals double the damage to that player instead. Yes, I like the double the damage thing. We're definitely going to have those effects in there. I suppose two of them means we're quadrupling damage, so Fiendish Duo is another one to go on the list with Sundial of the Infinite, if it isn't already in EDH Rec, which we'll find out. Uh, Tali more exiling stuff, uh, but without paying their mana cost seems good. Flame Tongue Kabu is, you know, just good general creature removal, for smaller creatures anyway. Uh, Burnished Heart's fine, but I, I can see why it's in there, but it's pretty mana-intensive to do that every time. I mean, it does help us get the mana out of our deck. Burnished Heart's a maybe. Like, I can definitely see... Hello, Cozy Ghost. How are you? Uh, same thing with Sky Scanner. Like, I get why it's in the deck that's copying creatures, but that's just so boring. <laughs> Bogart and Hellkite is obviously good, but also boring in its own way. Sad Robot better. Yeah, which is like, we already have Sab, Sad Robot. Uh, how is the deck going? Pretty smoothly so far. Uh, you can see our rules that we have down over there. Uh, rule number one is proving to rule out a lot of cards where we're like, as long as things are being triggered by combat or combat damage, we're fine. But there's a lot of things that are just, hey, do X damage to somebody which is not great uh no swiping swiper is also a thing that has caused us to not do a few cards uh continuing on magus the moon i have plenty of non-basic lanes that i want to be non-basic so i'm not going to be that guy <coughs> mere battle spheres maybe i like the tokens uh, of note, if you make a copy of Mirror Battle Sphere that enters tapped and attacking, you get the four 1-1 one, one Mirror tokens, uh, but you do not get the trigger like that you can tap the mirrors to just do damage to something, because it is already attacking. You are not declaring it an attacker, so you do not get the trigger. It's still good. We'll see. If I have room for it when we're wrapping up, I might throw it in there, but... There's like three or four cards already on that list. Yeah, Delina. Delina seems like I am going to do the standard mono red commander thing, which is people might underestimate me if I get anything other than a nut draw. And then I will glass cannon one player out of the game and then get stomped by the other two, which I'm perfectly fine with if that's how it plays out. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Bergy and then Harnfell. Do we want? Uh, like, the creatures you control can boast twice. Almost never matters. It's the uh, other bit. Whenever you cast a spell, add red. Like, we aren't... We aren't going, like, big red combo stuff. So I don't think it really matters. Harnfell is actually more interesting... Or it just lets us like pitch excess lands or cre irrelevant creatures or whatever to exile cards, which is very good in mono red. That's a maybe. Actually, let's let's for. I'm almost never excited if I play the Bergy side. That lets her proc again. Uh. The, oh, the Delina, the Harmonic Shaman? Yes. Assuming that's what you're talking about. Uh, Treason Sogar, nah. Neheb is just generic good. It doesn't really seem like it's much of anything for Delina, like specifically, thematic wise. Mogwar Marshal is just there because it can spit out more goblins, but. Who oh boy, is that a boring card to play in Commander? Uh, Relic Robber. Relic Robber is very funny. 
Yes, I agree, DMAC. Uh, Relic Robber is very funny, but somewhat violating of Rule 1. Uh, Zorn, we aren't really a treasure deck specifically, so I don't care. Rage Forger, put up 1 1 counter on each other shaman we control. I haven't been paying attention to creature types at all. I know Delina is a shaman. Uh, yeah, I think if the creatures stuck around through the second main phase, Delina would be absolutely busted. Like, the fact that Delina exiles the, to the copies it makes at the end of combat is very good for not making Delina <laughs> completely OP. Uh, Rage Forger, the whenever a creature control attacks plus one, you may have that creature deal one damage to target player, so rule one, slightly violating, but also just, yeah, we'll see. Uh, oh, wait a minute, no. So, this is the workaround to rule one if we want it to be. So rule one is we can't burn out people just by, like, do five damage to you. The rule is, however... I'll do, what well, once we get through this section, I'll show everybody the list again and update with the cards we have. Uh, what was I going to say? So the rule is combat is the win con. It's not we must kill people through combat damage. If we're attacking and that's causing things to trigger that's doing damage to people, that counts. That's fine. The creatures don't need to hit. It's just the act of swinging needs to be the thing that does it. So Rage Forger is not the best example of that just because I don't I'm not tribal shamans or anything but like that sort of effect I'm fine with uh, bronze blooded it lets us cheat creatures into play it combos very well with sundial of the infinite it is one of those fervor effects where all of our creatures have haste which is nice but we already have a couple of versions of that three mana so we get to cheat stuff into play without the sundial of the infinite though it does make all of our things one shot well two shot with delina if we're doing that i am not completely sold on that particular perforos but it's a maybe uh rionia beginning of combat on your turn create x tokens that are a copy of another dark creature you control or x is one plus the number of instant sorcery spells you cast they gain haste so it's stormy create copies. It's not bad. Uh, but meh, five mana is a lot. We aren't really a stormy instant sorcery deck so far anyway, so meh. Dishino Pyromancer. I can see why you want to make copies of it. Again, one of those things that I am thinking, man, that's just real boring in Commander. <laughs> why are we doing that? Uh, Hamletback Goliath is very funny. Uh, it just gets huge and then you fling it at somebody, I guess, would be the point, but uh, the copies just come in as the 6-6 six, six and don't really grow any bigger, and then they get exiled. Like, 6-6 six, six obviously isn't something to sneeze at. By itself, it's meh. <coughs> Hate Mirage. Uh, Cavalier Flame. Uh, discard any number, then draw that many. It's not bad. When it dies, deals X damage to each opponent play walker, where X is the number of playing cards in your graveyard. Like, Cavalier Flame's probably good. I don't know why it just doesn't seem exciting to me in this deck. As somebody who played Rug Elementals in Standard a few rotations ago, I mean, that was, that was M20, so that was like two years ago at this point. Good lord. Uh, I have a soft spot for Cavalier Flame, but I, it's for some reason it is striking me as meh right now. Uh, Molten Primordial is probably great, but it's no swiping swiper violation, so no Goblin Matron, we aren't tribal goblins, and I like meh. Magda is funny, I guess. It makes, you know, tokens, but uh, yeah, no. I don't see it. So, before we get into instant sorceries and the rest of this, let's add some cards to our deck and see where we're at. Uh, what was it I was taking out? I was taking out Thran Dynamo, and I was also adding in Sundial of the Infinite. So, let's do that. Add card and save. And refresh some screens. 
and let's figure all of this out now. All right, switch the view, visual, make sure I can see what you all of the people are saying, and let's adjust these so we can actually see stuff. Throwing in some decently expensive cards, we aren't that bad yet. I guess it's hard to be that bad without it in mono red. Whatever. Uh, anyway. Eh? Eh? It's kind of hard to frame everything. Alright. Uh, bear with me one second now that things are... There we go. Alright, I knew there was a reason I had that blank space in the middle. Uh, especially Hellblint is Ox of Agonis. That's definitely an option. Uh, we'll have... We're, we're, we still have a little bit of space in here. We're at 75 cards, so... And this mostly takes us through, like, creatures and whatnot. We have 21s. There's definitely more room for creatures, but we still have a bunch of instants and sorceries to add to draw cards, so I'm not that worried. Cozy here is the list as we have it so far. I'm going to leave this up for a moment just so everybody can get a good look at what we're working with here. Let's make sure that price is nice and prevalent and uh, was there something else I was planning on taking out I know we took out Thran Dynamo to add in uh, the Mind Stone instead just because it's slightly better or just more on curve I can see Delina wanting a lower curve especially on the non-creature stuff uh, so yeah we just need a bunch more like card draw uh, we can, there's a few other cards I'm thinking of that I can't quite remember the names of right now, but we'll get there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this doesn't look bad so far. Yeah, we're definitely going to do more card draw in this next section. So, let's get to it. I'm not Jeweled Lotusing. <laughs> I... I don't, I have no need to turn one to Lena. Like, yes, ju like, that. that's a thing, it's probably good, but, like, Delina by herself doesn't seem fantastic. There's other stuff you need to do to make Delina good. Getting her out early is just getting her killed early. I, like, I kind of agree, like, I... I am already going to have a big target once I get going at all because mono red aggro is great uh, <laughs> at killing one person and then dying. So I want to be, I want to draw the least attention to myself as I can through turns like one through three or four, and then just explode at people and hopefully still be alive. So we'll see. Uh, instance, Valakut Awakening. Uh, I like that. Yeah, I like Valakut Awakening. Just gives me the option for the Valakut Stone Forge, so that is... One land, one basic mountain or other land we can take out. I feel like for every two of these, you can safely remove one. The first one's kind of a gimme. Uh, a Braid. A fine card. Super boring to have in Commander. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Pyro and Red Elemental Blast strike me as more like CDH considerations. Like, I like the idea of being able to counter spells, only countering blue spells. I have no idea what the other peoples are playing. I don't know, like, if I had an idea of what the meta that I'm sitting down against is all the time, like, if this is my playgroup, that's when I consider throwing in cards like Pyro and Red Elemental Blast. I'm not throwing them in blind, it just seems bad. Uh, deflecting Swat is hilarious and is absolutely going in the deck. <laughs> Bolt, great card, boring in commander, don't do it. Seething Song, uh, we aren't that combo-y. Yeah, I don't know, seems fine, but who cares. Uh, the deck list will get posted. Uh, it will be up on Goldfish after this and there'll be links on Card Kingdom uh, like, if you follow Card Kingdom's Twitter account and whatnot, you'll be able to find it. 
Uh, also, if you tune in in two weeks for Commander Kingdom when I actually play the deck, they will be uh, posted in the chat and like available for everybody. Yeah, Terror of the Peaks is a house. That's why it's in the deck. Uh, critical hit. Seems funny. Uh, like, we have the Barbarian class, which lets us roll more card, roll more dice, but... Eh. Critical hit is one of those cards where if we have room at the end and are just searching for cards to throw in, sure, but I'm not going to care right now. Uh, Kazool's Fury is a great fling variant that works as an extra land drop if you need it, but fling is not a card I want because it is too tempting to violate rule number one with. Like, if we were going to fling, we would play fling, Kazool's Fury, any, like, anything else we could, and then that's when you throw in the Hamlet Bat Goliath just because Hamlet Bat Goliath would very quickly grow into some huge 25-25 that you can just fling to somebody's face and kill them. But again, not caring so much. Uh, Savage Beating is good fun. Yeah, I mean, Savage Beating is exactly the sort of card we want. Unexpected Windfall, there was the other version of it that only cost three. It only gives you one treasure, but that's the version of that I want. Uh, so, Unexpected Windfall is another one of those cards. If we have room at the end, sure, but for now, no. Uh, Wild Ricochet is real funny. Any effect I have, any effect I can throw in like that where it's just messing with people's removal and whatnot, I am down for. Uh, what else do we have? You find some prisoners. Destroy an artifact. Exile library. Like, it's fine. It's probably good, but it's just a headache in webcam, Commander. Yeah, I don't know. Like, that, that is very close to being no swiper, no swiping swiper rule violation, so I don't know. Do, do, do. Zerker's Frenzy seems funny. Choose. Oh, you roll. It, it already comes with. Uh, so how does that work with Barbarian class? So we have Berserker's Frenzy, which already is roll 2d20 and ignore the lower result. So that is advantage in D&D again. Berserker, or Barbarian class, is if you would roll one or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus one. Okay, so it just spells it out. So we roll three dice and we take the highest result. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, ignore the lower roll, and the barbarian class says ignore the lowest roll. So, yes. Berserk? Berserk is green. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Berserker's friendly I'm fine with. Berserker's frenzy? Yes. Barbarian class. Yes, barbarian class is already definitely in the deck. Oh, hey, I should be uh, on this thing so you all can see what I'm looking at. Sorry. I realized I just went through a whole bunch of cards and was on the wrong thing, so you couldn't see what I was talking about. Oh, uh, what was it? We added Valakut's uh, Awakening, because it's good card draw when our hand is full of stuff that does nothing. Deflecting Swat is hilarious, so that's in. All of these are kind of boring. Uh, Kasul's Fury is the when I was talking about Fling. Wild Ricochet, absolutely. Savage Beating, absolutely. Unexpected Windfall might go in, but there was the other version of it that I like slightly better that's going to go in first uh reiterate is nice except it doesn't do the thing that wild ricochet and deflecting swat do where it actually saves your tar like the initial target of the spell because you copy it and you choose new co new targets but the original spell still goes off exactly like it would so i'm less a fan of reiterate and reiterate style effects uh, thank you, Cozy Ghost. Thank you for hanging out for a bit. Uh, Faraday's Fireballs, very meh. Pyrokinesis. No. <laughs> yep. Uh, Mog Salvage. Great free destroy one artifact. We can do better. Reverberate is the same problem as Reiterate. Sorceries. Now we get into fun stuff. Uh, seize the day. Absolutely, we like that. 
Vandal Blast, always a good time. Gamble, sure, I like Gamble. There, there are times we will need like Vandal Blast or Blasphemous Act or just something right in that moment. And Gamble makes it funny. Relentless Assault, sure. We're gonna be that deck. We are absolutely going to be that deck. Uh, chain Reaction. How do you all feel about Chain Reaction? I find that Chain Reaction is absolutely fantastic half the time at being a total board wipe. And then the other half of the time, the board has already been wiped or like is relatively been cleared and there's not that much. And then somebody, we're late enough in the game where somebody is able to play like, you know, a Kozilek or whatever. Just something that is way too big to kill with Chain Reaction. So I'm not sure I'm throwing it in right now. Uh, Twin Flame. Twin Flame fits in the theme, kind of, but... Yeah, I don't know about Twin Flame. It seems okay. It doesn't seem fantastic for some reason. It feels like a slot that I would rather be just another good creature, another good thing, than that effect. Uh, cathartic Reunion, that sort of thing, is a maybe. I think I'd rather only be discarding one card at a time. I'd rather do, like, Thrill of Possibility. So we'll figure that out. Uh, Heat Shimmer, same thing as Twin Flame. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mana Geyser is great acceleration, but again, we aren't exactly big red. Like, we have big mana spells, but we aren't... We aren't trying to cast huge fireball to kill somebody. Ah, uh, tormenting voice. That we're going to end up throwing one of those sort of things in there. I'm just not sure which yet. Uh, Shatter skull smashing. Do we want? Uh, it doesn't kill players, so we like that. It can just take out target stuff. Yeah, I like that, and that does let us officially cut one mountain from the deck now with the other. Uh, possible land card we have. Wheel of Fortune. I'm, we have no reason to be wheeling. We have no payoff for wheels. Uh, crash through seems real funny with multiple combats. Yeah, I'm fine with crash through. Reforge the soul. Again, a wheel, which is great theoretically, but not great in like, we have no payoff for wheel other than the draw seven cards. But everybody else gets to do too, so who cares. Uh, this was the one I was thinking of. Seize the Spoils. Seems pretty good. Yeah. Discard one card, draw two cards, create a treasure token. Fantastic. It is... So the other one, that's the new one from Adventures in the Forgotten Realm, is an instant for one more mana and you make a second token... But, uh, yeah, I'm fine with it being three mana, draw two cards, create a treasure. Like, that seems just fine to me. Uh, Warlord's Fury, I don't want too many straight up just combat tricks. Does that make sense? So I, I think I'd rather have Crash Through than Warlord's Fury. Uh, Act of Treason, we already said no. By Force, we already have Vandal Blast for. I don't want too many of that effect. Uh, Price Loyalty is another act of treason thing. Light up the stage isn't bad for the impulsive card draw. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I didn't clear out my old stuff, did I? Alright, let's figure out. It's all instants and sorceries. So yes, this should be all the new stuff. The Lightning Greaves, the Mind Stone, and the Barbarian class were already in there. Uh, the, the one second while I just clean up some stuff. Ah, uh, is Blasphemous Act already in there? Yes, so Blasphemous Act goes away. Uh, Vandal Blast, are you already in there? You are not, so you stay. Awakening the slot, chaos, chaos warp. Are you, are you a thing? Chaos, yes. All right, I think that's it. So, 
12 cards. We have 25 s slots left still to fill. Total. I'm guessing most red decks will vomit out their hands so that they benefit more often than the table makes it worth it for a lot of players, maybe. Yeah, the wheel wheeling in a red deck, like throwing in wheels, isn't bad. It's just wheels also so often benefit your opponents. Like you are messing with the plans, whatever hand they had, whatever they had in their hand before you wheeled. But refilling everybody to seven is uh, already hairy enough. Sometimes if you're playing one-on-one -on -one magic and multiplayer magic, you are gaining seven cards. Your opponents are gaining twenty-one cards. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, World at War. Yes, it's rebound, savage beating style stuff, so absolutely. Uh, you may play those cards. It's spells cast for you. play them. The Ignite the Future we absolutely love is impulsive card draw. Winds of Change is another semi wheel. It's like a mini windfall sort of thing. Uh, Burning Inquiry, not. I don't want that much, uh, <laughs> whatchamacallit, randomness. Uh, Fury of the Horde we love, yes. We have a ton of these effects already. How many more do we need? Uh... We might cut down on the extra combats just because we have a lot of them already. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, moving on to utility artifacts, uh, real quick. No, let's let's get through this. There's not. Yeah, there's not that much more stuff to go. So let's go through this. Any reason for Goblin Engineer or other similar effects to benefit off the looting or wheels? There's maybe a couple. Like I can see other builds of this deck that would do that more. Uh, the big thing for me is, like, if we were more of a treasure deck, I would want, like, outside of Dockside Extortionist, I would definitely want us to be playing more artifacts so I could do things like wheels and then just sacrifice the treasure to Goblin Engineer to get stuff out of my graveyard. If we end up with enough artifacts to do that sort of thing, then Goblin Welder, Goblin Engineer are, uh... Definite options. But for now, Whisper Silk Cloak is one of the cards I absolutely want in this deck. Because Whisper Silk Cloak on Delina essentially means that unless they have a board wipe or want to spend multiple cards to first kill the Whisper Silk Cloak and then kill Delina, uh, they're out of luck. Delina's just always going to get through and be able to do Delina's thing. Ruby Medallion, we already have in there. Panharmonicon is good, but man, if there is any other card, like, it is in the top echelon of cards that make people want to kill you the moment it comes down. I'm fine with the extra combat cards, even though those also make people want to kill you, because when, by the time you are in the mode of casting all of the extra combat cards, uh, you are in the process of actively trying to win the game. Whereas Panharmonicon comes down, and no matter what stage of the game you are, people immediately try to just get you out of the game. <laughs> uh, Helm of the Host. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except it isn't legendary. If it is legendary, the token means haste. It is good. It is another one of those cards that people see you trying to abuse, so maybe. Uh, Commander's Plate's very funny because since we're a mono commander, it does a lot more. A mono color commander, it does a lot. Uh, yeah. That makes Delina, what, a 6-5? Who we want to be attacking every turn, <laughs> multiple times maybe? Uh, I can see that being a thing, sure. Uh, what do we got? Treasure chest is fine. It's good. We like it's the, my problem with it is it's a one shot. So this is where we would want like the Goblin Welder. 
But Delina plus Harmonicon is too sweet and it doesn't break your rules. No, me not including Pan Harmonicon is a political consideration, not a rule consideration. <laughs> it is, I want to be in the game at least long enough to kill somebody. Uh, where are we at? Deck of many things. Return a card at random from a graveyard to your hand. Not bad. Draw two. Put a creature card from graveyard on the battlefield under your control. And that creature dies. Its owner loses the game. That's right. That's a weird one. Do we want deck of many things? Wow. That's... Hmm. Hmm. Man, that's bizarre. It is very hard for me to, like, figure out if deck of many things is something we want. So for now, I'm scared of it. I'm gonna go away. But if we decide to go silly and have the slot at the end, maybe. Uh, green and white, protection, equip your shields from the exile up to one target creature you own, then search your library for a basic land card. Put both on the battlefield under your control, then shuffle. So it's the Flicker plus Ramp. That's interesting. I... I don't know how my current thoughts on Swords and Commander. Like, I am somewhat hesitant to actually ultimately include Commander's Plate just because protection is such a feel-bad mechanic sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. For now, I'm going to skip it. It's definitely a consideration. Tome of Legends. Uh, yeah, we want Tome of Legends. Like, we want to be able to draw cards. Delina feeds directly into it, both just we're casting Delina a bunch, and then attacking puts page counters on it, so yes. Hey, there's Sundial. It is on EDH Rec. People did see the combo. It's good. Uh, Idol of Oblivion, uh, yeah, we can do that. Draw cards every time we, uh, make tokens, I like it. Uh, yeah, we want to make all of our creatures cheaper to cast and then draw cards for doing it, so we can just pitch excess mountains or whatever, do that. Lithiform Engine is another one of those ones like Panharmonicon, people love killing you for it. Copy target activator triggered ability you control and may choose new targets for the copy. So we get to do the Delina thing a lot. Copy target instant or sorcery, that's one's men, then copy target permanent spell you control. So you have to do it when it's on the stack. Uh, like, at that point, if we're playing Lithoform Engine, wouldn't we just play the other one that I skipped over earlier, I think? What is it? Strionic Resonator? Where'd you go? Yeah, so if we're gonna play Lithoform Engine, we would just play Strionic Resonator. Strionic Resonator. And... Those cards always feel like a weird slot to me. I don't know why, but yes. Uh, yeah, for, I don't know why. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a meh feeling in my brain from that. Uh, all right, uh, what do we got? Trailblazers, boots, like we already have the Whisper Silk Cloak. We have a bunch of ways of helping out. You know what? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take out Commander's Plate just because the protection is kind of a weird uh, feel baddy mechanic to me. I don't know why unblockable feels, but I guess it's just there's more options for other people to deal with it. There's a lot of political considerations that go into deck building, and I am trying to build a fun deck. If I was just building the deck to try and win, then all the swords and other things go in here. But anyway, uh, Trailblazer's Boots, I feel, can take that slot if we really want it. Just another thing that will essentially always make... Uh, Delina unblockable. And having multiple of these sort of effects, like the Whisper Silk Cloak and the Trailblazer Boots, I'm fine having in the deck, just because making some of our other creatures essentially unblockable too is never bad. We are winning through swinging at people. 
Uh, Embercleave is... Embercleave is good. Uh, for each attacking creature you control. So once Delina makes the copies, that does count for lowering the cost of Embercleave. Uh, the Double Strike and Trample is real good. Yeah, I think we have to. Like, I'm trying to make people not want to kill me instantly, but Mono Red does just need to win at some point, too. And you need cards like Ember Cleave if you're gonna. Uh, is meh, meh, meh. Like, yes, Dolmen Gate. Prevent all combat damage that will be dealt to attacking creatures you control. Yes, we should. We just we just should. It makes people be able to block, but the blocking does nothing. Uh, Endless Atlas. Endless Atlas seems fine. We have enough other ways to draw cards, though, that I'm not too worried about it right now. Boots of Speed is very meh. Skull Clamp is Skull Clamp. It's great. We have a couple of ways that we're making tokens right now, but that's not, like, the point of the deck. I just, yeah, like, Skull Clamp I'm always somewhat hesitant to throw in if I, you're not able to actually take proper advantage of it. Because if you aren't pumping out 1-1s one and being able to draw the two cards every time, it's extremely underwhelming. Uh, the, uh, Battle Mage's Bracers is just another way to copy the Lena's Trigger, which is fine, but meh, Helmet Possession is a swipey thing. Uh, this is meh. Like, I see the point of Colon Dice. That's actually really good, isn't it? With the Lena, because you just sacrifice the creature that you copy. Yeah, fine. Alright. We only have two more slots left, so we're at the point where we're going to have to start making cuts once we add in too much more things. Uh, what do we got? We got Blood Moon is a no. Shadow Mage, Flame Shadow Conjuring, non-token creature in its battlefield under your control. And if they red, if you do, put a token creature on the battlefield's copy of that creature. So it's non-token, so Zelina doesn't really uh, combo with it. Gum Bombardman is great. It's not for this deck because of Rule 1. Outpost Siege is always good. Uh, yes. Both versions of it are always good, essentially, except that the second Dragons violates our Rule 1. Cons is always good. If we throw it in, it's four cons. Warstorm Surge is, again, always good, but violates Rule 1. Uh, Mirror March is... Uh, I don't care. <laughs> Aggravated Assault. There we go. I think that's the one we want. Yes. So yeah, Aggravated Assault is definitely the extra combat thing we want. If we end up cutting some cards, it's going to be some of the other take extra combat things just for Aggravated Assault. I can see us gambling for Aggravated Assault a lot, which makes me want something that lets me buy cards back out of my graveyard. Like, what can I do in Mono Red that does that Codex Shredder? It seems awful. We can do, like, Felden's Cane sort of shenanigans, but yeah. I don't know. There's Underworld Breach, which lets me cast things from my graveyard, but Underworld Breach is also one of those cards that people immediately just assume you're comboing. But, I mean, it's for that turn only. But I feel like if you're doing Underworld Breach, then you need to add in cards like Bergy and all of the big mana makers that are the one-shot things. So yeah, Underworld... Yeah, 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 I don't know. Mm. Uh, Fiery Emancipation is funny, but, uh, again, too many people want you to die when you play it. <laughs> Alright, Planeswalkers. Uh, I like Chandra Torch of Defiance. I think she is one of the best Planeswalkers ever printed. The only problem is her ultimate definitely violates our rule one. Uh, so, like, we can do other things. The plus one's real good. What does Zariel do? Uh, haste, create one one red devil creature token. When this creature dies, deals one damage to any target. You get an emblem with. At the end of the first combat phase on your turn, untap target creature you control. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. So it's one of those. 
Sneak attack seems a must, kind of. Sneak attack... Yes and no, like... The creature goes away at the end of turn. So if we have a Sundial of the Infinite or another way to save it, it's absolutely fantastic. This isn't Legacy Sneak Attack, so we aren't putting in, like, Emrakul and just going crazy. I don't want to put in things like Kozlek or Ulamog just because that feels like easy mode. <laughs> and I want this deck to be as mono-red as possible, not big, scary, colorless monster. As it stands, I think I have one more slot. Because I'm at 75 cards right now. So, did I... Is Are, like, any of the card draw... I think I put in, what was it? I didn't yet. Okay, yeah, there's, there's a few card draw things. I feel like I need... Sneak attack seems as much as this as well. My, yeah, my problem with sneak attack is I, it's hard for me to want to play it without Sundial of the Infinite being on the field, just because I don't have a lot of recursion, and I need a way to uh, have reach, I guess. Like, Sneak Attack seems very good at helping me take out one player. Like, is that where we add in Sneak Attack and the Sword of Hearth and Home? Because at that point, I can bounce, the, I can flicker the creature so it comes back and is a new creature that doesn't get exiled. Or doesn't get sacrificed. Is that worth it? Is that a thing? seems like a thing, doesn't it? But with Delina? I get that Delina lets me make the copy of the creature I'm sneak attacking, and you still have to sacrifice the nor the other one, right? Yeah. I mean, yes, I'll throw it in there just because it feels like I should. I'm just trying to talk myself out of it for some reason or another. All right. Itali plus sneak attack plus her commander. Yes, that's basically instant win. All right, so we have these 25 cards that will take us up to 100. So I'm going to add them in, and then we're going to look over things and figure out if I should cut something for, like, Jessica's Will or any of those other straight-up good cards. So let's get this done. Oh, I accidentally added two copies of Tybalt's Trickery, it would appear. So I actually have one more slot still. Yes. One more slot to go. So, what do we want that last card to be? I guess Jessica's Will, since I just said it, huh? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel like there was some other funny stuff that I passed up. Let's, let's go through it again real quick. So this is all just like the utility lands. Oh, I can take out one mountain too, that's right. So I have two slots now to fill. So I take out one mountain because I have the two uh, modal double face cards that are lands. Oh, what was the, what was the card I was thinking of? The, it's a card that starts with C where when small creatures attack you do damage somehow. What is that card? Crap. Whenever a creature with power something or less attacks. Whenever a creature with power uh, something cavalcade. Cavalcade of Calamity?
Cavalcade of Calamity. I got there. Whenever a creature you control with power one or less attacks, Cavalcade of Calamity deals one damage target creature player to target to the player or planeswalker that creature is attacking. That is great. Do we actually have one mana creatures or not? Let's refresh all of these and take a look. We are essentially, progress-wise now, in the last step, which is figuring out those last few slots. Which is always a bear. It's always the trickiest part. What are like the last two cuts you make in the deck? So there's that. Here's this list. Which is always a bit tricky to get all of it on screen. Okay, so the only card you can't quite see there is the Blasphemous Act up top. Yep, but you have one ones, thought not. Yeah, I don't have a lot of one power stuff. And I don't have a ton of things that are making small creatures either. So yeah, no, yeah, if, if Cavalcade of Calamity was going to be good enough, then uh, Skull Clamp would have been in the deck. So stuff we can add are going to be stuff like Outpost Siege, uh, just going back up through what we've done, what we've looked at. Outpost Siege, something like Thrill of Discovery, or one of those sort of things. Clearing some stuff out of my phone, making sure nothing insane was going on. Tormenting voice style effects. Uh, I think I would rather... To, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I'd rather do Outpost Siege if we're doing that. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, Fiendish Duo. Let's look at Fiendish Duo. There we go. Uh, is that seriously just a game night card? There's no other printing of it? That's bizarre. Wow, that's really weird. I don't know that I have ever seen a card that's just game night. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, but yeah, I'm fine throwing that in there. So we go. Fiendish Duo. That... What? Okay. I'm sorry. That's just really weirding me out for some reason. So Fiendish Duo, and for now we'll pencil in Outpost Siege, I guess. Alright, real quick, just run through some more stuff just to make sure I'm not missing anything super ridiculous here. That should definitely be in. cards that are good but not necessarily great on their own uh still not sure about harnfell like harnfell is fantastic it's kind of a question of would i rather have harnfell or would i rather have outpost siege i honestly think harnfell might take it over outpost siege Yeah, I think so, actually. Am I crazy? I feel like Harnfell is... Like, Outpost Siege is fantastic. Harnfell feels ridiculously good. No. No, I'm not out of touch. It's the children who are wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good. 
All right, so yeah, let's add in Harnfell. We'll take out Outpost Siege. Add in Harnfell. All right, I guess it's Bergy. It's not, yeah. Add card, and then we take out our one mountain. So 18 mountains, which isn't bad. Uh, we save that, and I think that should be good. Yep. All right, let's update all of our views and whatnot. So we have our final deck. If there's anything else you think I should change or throw in, now is the time to speak up. Because otherwise, we are locking this in. Something like that. And our final view looks like that. Let's. Uh, it's, it's not quite gonna let me get all of it on the screen. So you're missing Fury of the Horde and Blasphemous Act up top there. And a World at War down here. But that is the deck. Mana Crypt. No. I appreciate what you're trying to do here, but no. So, just looking over things, like uh, Urza's Saga, we didn't really take a ton of advantage of the uh, tutor bit of it, which I'm fine with. Our two options for that are Everflowing Chalice and Soul Ring, which certainly aren't bad. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is our deck. I think this is good. I think I like this. We have Castle Embereth. It's right there. I, I know my castles. Shoot. Are there any other red utility lanes I should have in? Uh, bar. Let's, let's. Yeah, I don't even know how to, like, search for that sort of thing just by itself. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. I think this is a thing. This looks... Like a deck that does stuff. We have ways to go through cards. We have plans for how to kill people. We can cycle through... That's a little better. Through all of our stuff, we have plenty of mana. Oh, you good. Yeah. We have a bunch of big scary creatures and ways to get them. We have a gamble. <laughs> uh, oh, we have Valakut. Do I still want Valakut in the deck? Do I want that to just be like a wasteland or something? Valakut does seem like the card in this deck that most violates rule one. Like, I put it in there because it's also good at taking out creatures and planeswalkers. Yeah, let's change Valakut for the moment into, yeah, I don't know, just a wasteland. Save, update, uh, update now that it's actually saved, and update the other list. Alright. So we have a deck. It isn't like. I know it's mono red. We still didn't go too crazy expensive with it, which is good. Yeah. This seems. This seems like a thing. Cool. Alright. And then, so yes, if you want to see this deck in action, uh, I am calling it How to Make Friends. <laughs> Which I just like. I like. I like my deck names. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see this deck in action, tune in in two weeks, in the same spot on August 25th at 2 p.m. for Commander Kingdom. I will be playing this month against Benjamin Wheeler, Kristen Gregory, and Jim LePage. So two CAG members 
and the biggest champion of gladiator that exists in addition to you know being general cool streamer people and uh spike feeder and yeah one of our own blog writers Kristen. uh that is who we're playing against with this deck how to make friends uh come on by uh I'm interested to see how this does. The first mono deck, mono color EDH deck I've built for this. I have built mono color EDH decks in the past, but they've all been much meaner. I will do my obligatory thing right at the end here where I say when I'm just building decks to play for myself, not on the stream, I go much meaner generally. <laughs> Why this stream has been very fun for me to branch out and try to flex more of the let's be fun muscle in me and not the super spiky muscle that I have. Uh, but yeah, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all of these suggestions. And yeah, the VOD for this will be up likely by tomorrow. We'll have VODs for Commander Kingdom when that happens too. Thanks for hanging out and have a good day everybody. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>